Real Madrid through to the Champions League semi-final after a 0-0 draw at Anfield against the Liverpool. Damage done, of course, in the first leg. A 3-1 aggregate score then sees them through to the final four. Uh, Jules joins us uh, along with Jan as well. Jules is at the game, is now in a hotel in Liverpool with horrible Wi-Fi. And if he moves too much, we lose his connection. So this could be fun. Uh, Jules, overall, <laughs> Liverpool creating so many chances but just couldn't get any of them in. At this level, you cannot not be efficient enough or clinical enough, especially against a team like this, who I think expected Liverpool really to start so intensely and with so much passion going forward, put them under pressure, especially on that right-hand side where Federico Valverde played as, as a makeshift right-back. That was not his position, and you could see that Liverpool targeted him very early on. The problem is, if you don't take those chances, then Real Madrid get more comfortable, they break you down easier, they put their tempo on the game, and then when they control the game, it's even harder for you. And the regrets, I guess, would come from the first leg more than the second leg for Liverpool. But even tonight, I thought, after the game, you could see by their body language, the way they look, that they knew that had they put just one of those chances in, especially the, the early ones, then maybe the whole things could have been different. And they were good chances as well, yeah. Yeah, that Salah chance after one and a half minute was uh, unbelievable. But I think to, today we saw two uh, quarterfinals. The Dortmund coming back to Signal Iduna Park. Fantastic crowd there with a yellow wall. Same with Liverpool with, with a cup and a full stadium. And you need that uh, in, in your second leg to do that kind of miracle. And I agree with Jules that it was all done in the first, uh, first leg. Uh, but I must say that I'm, I'm impressed of of the culture, the, the winning culture of Real Madrid coming into April and May now. And you just feel that they just sniff the, the titles there. And uh, you have to respect them as well. And, and Klopp said after the game, and I think he's right, I mean, the way at the end there that Real Madrid just controlled the game. Mm. Yeah, this is, of course, a Real Madrid side without Sergio Ramos, without Varane at the back. Uh, initially, early on in this game, they were tested a lot. But as it just went on, it was almost just like... The experience just just ooze out of every pore of some of these big players. And it may be in an oversimplification, it may be sort of uh, when you consider the discussion around the chance of Mohamed Salah that you say, well, if he scores that, it changes the dynamic of the game. Well, of course it would have, but it didn't happen. And what I thought was really good from Real Madrid, and you just alluded to it, is the fact that, yeah, they withstood that pressure, that first 10 minutes or so. But after those first 10 minutes, there was a sequence of passing from Real Madrid that lasted a couple of minutes that just kind of set the tone for the rest of the match. Yeah, Liverpool are going to create some opportunities. Yeah, they're going to have intensity. Yeah, they're going to have energy. But we're going to take that belief from Liverpool because we're going to keep the ball and we're going to kill the game. And we're going to take the game into the attacking half. And we're really not attacking. We're really not threatening. But we're going to keep the ball far from Thibaut Courtois. And whenever they do break us down, Thibaut Courtois is going to come up with a save. Whenever they do break down the midfield, then the, the work of Militao and Nacho has to be highlighted. They were very good on the night once again. And they were very good in El Clásico as well. And they were very good last week against Liverpool. And so you think about Real Madrid and some of the, ch the changes that Zinedine Zidane has had to make and the adjustment that he has had to make with this team because of the absences, because of COVID, because of injuries, whatever the case may have been. And this has been some of his finest work. The idea that through the last 10 days, he is circumnavigated two games against Liverpool and El Clasico in between all of that, and he's been successful at doing that, that takes some doing, individually from the players, as a group from the players, but certainly from the coaching staff as well. I'm intrigued, Jules, how this result will define Liverpool going forward regards with their plans in the transfer market, who they, who they might bring in. Because we've talked so much this season about the problems that they've had at the back, rightly so, of course, key members out with injury. But it's becoming more and more prevalent, isn't it, that this front three isn't clicking as it used to. And people are pointing to tiredness. But, you know, you're up against a Real Madrid side that are shattered as well, that have been playing, you know, every three or four days, big proper games. And yet still... Liverpool aren't able to get it done in the manner in which that they did when they were so successful 18 months ago. So do we define that as, don't worry, the summer's a clean slate, they'll come back, recharge, or are there deeper issues there? I think they need a break to start with because they, they, it's been tiring, not just this season, but the last three or four seasons. 
Jurgen Klopp often this season has already spoken about the transfer window in the summer saying there's not going to be much done either either ways arriving or departing so you would expect I guess that front three of Firmino, Salah and Mane to stay they still have two years more on their contract at the end of this season they're all 29 Sadio Mane's birthday was four days ago so they're, they're all 29 with two more years on their contract I think, I think Liverpool will sign Konate from, from RB Leipzig at the back, which I think is a very good defender, especially at that price, at 40 million euros. But then something else, you're right, has to be done. I'm not sure what happened to Thiago Alcantara. Mm. Diego Jota has showed before the injury, and I guess after the return of the injury, how valuable it could be for this team. But, but maybe even from clubs, something has to change a little bit there. Not just who are the signing are, who's staying, who's leaving. But maybe in the way he approaches games as well, maybe something has to evolve a little bit. Thiago signing's been a bust, hasn't it, Jan? It has, uh, but still it's, it's not enough. Uh, and I think that uh, sometimes oh, Klopp, with his owner, is a, is a victim of his own success. We can you imagine when, uh, when Jurgen Klopp comes to, to the owners and says, I need this guy, I need this guy, I need money for this guy. And they have a look at his team and the performance, he, what he has done with his team, turning players into great, great players, winning them Champions League, Winning them, winning them the Premier League title for the first time, and and so on and so on. So, so I think that Jurgen Klopp wanted a year ago before the pandemic to to change a bit around, maybe sell Salah, get, maybe get some 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 new players in, but they were not able to do that because nobody know knew what was going on. I mean, we can laugh about Team of Werner now not being a big big success as Chelsea, but at that time. The club, the club was desperate to get him in, uh, in in their team. So I think they need some new fresh blood there now. Uh, and I will also say, uh, talking about the fans again, I think that the way Jurgen Klopp plays football, the way Liverpool plays football, they are a team and ha they have a system of playing that they need that encouragement. They need that speed and atmosphere also from the crowd. So maybe they are one of the those so-called so victims of the pandemic in, in, a, in a sporting way. Uh, meanwhile, for Real Madrid, another semi-final under Zinedine Zidane. Wow, look at that for a record. Mm -hmm. In wow. knockout matches, mm -hmm. one or advanced 14, only eliminated once. That was, of course, against Manchester City uh, last year. Jules, you've always just described him as a cheerleader. He's proven you wrong, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> of course, always. I mean, I, I saw him after the game today and... And we had a nice chat, and he, and he didn't say, I feel vindicated or anything like this, but you could see, he said, you know what, we're going to really celebrate this one, because not, not long ago, and we mentioned it a lot on the show, the critics were so high that he had to come out in his press conference and say, I've had enough now. Mm. Every day, every day I'm criticised. Every day this is my last game. Every time I'm under pressure. Every time this, every time that. And I think it's time, you know, for, for all of us to, to recognise what an incredible job he's done in his first spell, in his second spell now, the way he studied that Ship, the way, I mean, of course, they have a lot of experience and a lot of talent, there's no doubt, but certainly tactically as well, we've seen in the Classical, but in many games, big games this season, how clever he was and how the best he could get out of this team, and I think he deserves a lot of credit for that. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube, and for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app, and for premium content plus live streaming, make sure to subscribe to ESPN Player.